we've been teaching on covenant, and we've our, we started the we started the actual service of covenant a couple of weeks ago, and the very first thing that they did was exchange coats, and the second one was the exchange of the weapon belt, and we started on the weapon belt last week. And we talked about the helmet of salvation. We talked about the armor of righteousness. We talked about the armor of light. We talked about praise being a great, one of the greatest weapons. I know Cheryl said something great. She said, you know, really there is no weapon against the weapon of praise. Think about that. Because praise takes you right into his presence. Well, what enemy can come into his presence? None. None. So then we were talking last week, we started on the breastplate of righteousness. But I saw something today that I don't think I had ever seen. The breastplate of righteousness is our be- righteousness is our best defense against temptations to shield us. Remember the the let, in fact, let's look at that one scripture, 2 Corinthians 6:7. 2 Corinthians 6:7 in the amplified, please. He said, by speaking the word of truth in the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand to attack and for the left hand to defend. So our weapons, the weapons, the weapon of righteousness, the weapon of being in right standing with the Father, the weapon of knowing what God wants because righteousness is knowing God's way, knowing God's word, right? Being, yeah, doing and being like God, yeah. In fact, use, make sure you use that so they can hear you on the, they need to hear you out there. Amen? So, um, righteousness is our best defense against temptation. Think about that. Temptations come to get us off the path. But if we know God's will and we know God's way, then righteousness will keep us in the way. Because we'll go, wait a minute. I know who you are. You're not from God. Right? And so it shields me from that temptation. And an attack, when I speak the word of truth, I'm saying, wait just a minute. I know who you are. I see you and I bind you and I plead the blood. And he takes, or I speak the name of Jesus And at the name of Jesus, he has to bow his knee. But we know that when we bind the devil, when we resist the devil, he has to flee from us. Amen? And not only that, he resists, he flees from us in terror. So, um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to point your finger at the devil. I'm not, I'm not taking no virus on. Mm -mm. You better believe it. We're not taking any virus on. Use your mic. Yes, it's in the name of Jesus, and we are not taking on any virus. Sickness, Jesus bore all sickness and disease in his body. It has no right in our body. The only right it has is if we allow it. And you know what we say to that? No, no, a thousand times no, no. It came from an ungodly nation. That is not the deal. That's right. Satan wants to kill anybody he can at any time he can. Yeah. So I just, I just wanted to add that to the breastplate because it operates in the principles of righteousness. And of, uh, let's see. I, had, I wrote all kinds of stuff down, but I don't, don't understand my writing now. So let's go on to the belt of truth. And I love it because some, some, of, the, uh, some of the versions... Call it the girdle of truth. Ladies, what is a girdle? Well, some of you, some of you youngins don't know what a girdle does. <laughs> you didn't. Uh, maybe we ought to use the word Spanx. It's, it's like Spanx. It, it's, it, oh, say it again. It keeps everything together and it's right. You better believe it. That's right. That's right. So remember, we talked about the, the breastplate of righteousness covered the front of you till about right here. It covered your, all of your vital organs as well as your reproductive organs. And it covered your front, but it also covered your back. And, um, but the, gir- the 
the uh, girdle of truth went around and it held it in place. Think about that. Truth holds your righteousness Amen. in place. Amen. Everybody say that with me. Truth holds my righteousness in place. And if righteousness is protecting my vital organs, okay, and, and my girdle of truth is going to keep it in place, then I am guarded from those things that are coming to take me again out of God's way. He put there uh, Romans 14, 17. Romans 14, 17. After the kingdom of God is not a matter of getting the food and drink one likes, but instead it is righteousness, that state which makes a person acceptable to God, and heart peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. I don't think I'd ever, if, I probably have read this scripture before, but totally... Just went right over it. Isaiah 11, verses uh, 1 through 5. Well, I've never seen this part of it. He says, And there shall come forth a shoot out of the stock of Jesse, David's father, and a branch out of his roots shall grow and bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now, where's the Spirit of the Lord today? In me. All right, so who's resting on you? He is. Okay, the Spirit of the Lord is now resting on you. The Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. Now, right there, he's influencing David. Mm hmm. But he's in you. Yeah. And he was talking about Jesus, too, in this one. And he shall make him of quick understanding. So he's made us of quick understanding. And his delight shall be in the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. He's delighted in our reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes. We shall not judge by the sight of our natural eyes, nor decide by the hearing of our natural ears. But with righteousness and justice shall we judge the poor, and decide with fairness for the meek, the poor, and the downtrodden on the earth. He shall smite the earth and the oppressor with the rod of his mouth. Wow, that's us, folks. We shall smite the earth and the oppressor with the rod of his mouth coming out of our mouth and with the breath of his lips coming out of our lips, we shall slay the wicked glory and his righteousness shall be our girdle and faithfulness the girdle of our loins and the that's good one through five isn't that awesome that what a great confession to make every morning lord thank you that the spirit of the lord rests upon me a spirit of wisdom understanding counsel might Knowledge, reverential and obedient fear. You've made me of quick understanding. My delight is in, your delight is in my reverential and obedient fear of you, reverence of you. <laughs> I will not judge by the sight of my eyes. Neither will I decide by the hearing of my ears, but with righteousness and justice will I move or, be, or judge. Amen? That's Isaiah 11, 1 through 5. Is that one through five? That's powerful. All right, let's look at John 17. Sanctify them, purify, consecrate, separate them for yourself. Make them holy by the truth. Your word is truth. And remember, it's his word that keeps my righteousness intact. T Psalm 2711. Psalm 2711. He says, teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a plain and an even path because of my enemies, those who lie in wait for me. So his truth will be a lamp to our feet, a light to our feet. 
He'll make his way plain before us because of our enemies. Amen. Um, look at John 1, 17. John 1, 17. For while the law was given through Moses, grace, unearned and undeserved favor and spiritual blessing and truth came through Jesus Christ. Verse, uh, chapter 8, 32 of John. 8, 32 of John. Mm -hmm. And you will know the truth. And the truth, what? Set will set you free. And uh, John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Amen. Um, one more. 17, 19. John 17, 19. And why do you need the Father? Why do I need the Father? You can't separate Jesus from the Father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father's in me. Do you believe that the Father's in me and I'm in the Father? Well, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father because the Father's in me and Jesus is in yeah. me. He, he is a higher truth, but the same truth. Yeah, wow. Wow, interesting. Very good. Just drop that on us, bud. John, all right. If you ever get a hold of the Father on a regular basis, the Creator, He will tell you stuff about stuff. Mm. Amen. Amen. All right. Now you just how do you how do you go beyond that? Mm. John seventeen nineteen. And so for their sake and on their behalf, I sanctify, dedicate, and consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified, dedicated, consecrated, and made holy in the truth. So we are sanctified, we are dedicated, we are consecrated, and we are made holy by the truth. Glory to God. The next one is the, your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, all of this is part of our, our weapon belt. All of this is part of our weapon belt. Our, all right, our feet are shod with the... This isn't part of my weapon belt. This is part of my weaponry, my armor. The gospel of... And, it, and they are cleats. In fact, they talk about... What? It's in Ephesians. Ephesians 6. It's talking about your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We're talking about the weapons of our warfare, our, our armor. And he said, your, your feet your, are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Cleats, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. When it says that your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It means you are equipment ready. It means you are armed and ready. It means you are prepared and resolved. You are in a stance. You're in a prepared and resolved stance, enabling a steady steps and that you will adhere, and be able to adhere to the gospel. But they're like cleats, and they, um, I love how Rick Renner describes them. He says they're, except they aren't like cleats like you and I think of. They had spikes on the bottom of them. And Roman soldiers wore them because when they were out in the fields, there were, you know, sticks and things that would damage their feet if they weren't able to walk on top of these. And, uh, again, you know, it's just like a football player wears cleats to give him steady steps, um, you know, a, a golfer wears cleats, yeah, to, huh? to firm footing, yeah, firm footing. But he said they, he would talk about the Roman soldiers would march down the city, and he said, oh, and I love this, he said if anybody fell in front of them, they were not allowed to stop. And so they got these... I think they were like 
12 inch cleats or something, 12 inch nails that were on there and they would just be stomping, stomping, stomping. And if you got in front of them and you couldn't get out of their way, you just got stomped to death. Mm, sounds to me like one of the scriptures that says that soon Satan will crush your enemies under your feet. Woo! Come on. What did I say? Oh, no. No. God's going to. Thank you. Yes, it's Romans 16.20. Romans 16.20. Thank you all for helping me. I said, sometimes, you know, isn't it funny? Sometimes you prepare so much that you get up here and you're just, ah. 1620, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, be with you. It is with me. Come on. Glory to God. And the God of peace will soon crush your enemy under your feet. Amen. Glory to God. He drew me up out of a horrible pit, a pit of tumult and destruction. Yes, he did. Out of the miry clay from froth and slime. He sure did. And he set my feet upon a rock, steadying my steps and establishing my goings. So when my feet are shod with the preparation of peace, my steps are steady. And, I'm, and it talks about going on an ascending path. I'm going up. I'm going up. Now, if you don't sing, that next one don't mean a thing. But I sing. All right. Verse 3. Verse 3. And he has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear, revere and worship, and put their trust and confident reliance in the Lord. Amen. Pastor sings. Psalm 119, 133. Establish my steps and direct them by means of your word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Hebrews 12, 1. I love this one. Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, every unnecessary weight, and that sin which so easily, readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. And let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. So when you got on the shield, the, the preparation of the gospel of peace, when you got those cleats on, then you are able to do that. You are able to patiently endure. You are able to be steady. You are able to be actively persistent on the course of the race that's set before you. Um, and my favorite is not in, uh, we can't put it up there, but it's Romans 16, 25 in the Mirror Bible, and it talks about, I will stand, you have established and strengthened me to stand immovable in the face of contradiction. That's me. Hebrews 2, verses 6 through 9. Hebrews 2, 6 through 9. It has been solemnly and earnestly said in a certain place, What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you should graciously and helpfully care for, visit, and look after him. Thank you, Lord, for doing that. For some little time you have ranked him lower than and inferior to the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. You have put everything, everybody say everything. everything. What, is out, what is outside of everything? Nothing. Nothing. You have put everything in subjection under his feet. God has put everything under our feet. He said, but now in putting everything in subjection to man, he left nothing outside of man's control. Let that sink. I hear it all the time. Well, he didn't put it under my feet. <laughs> then you're what calling you God say? a liar. You just called God a liar. What did he just say? He just said, yeah. 
He said, And what your opinion is don't mean a whole lot. No. What I think doesn't mean a thing. It's what he says. Right. Amen. Everybody's got an opinion, but there's only one opinion that means anything. It's his. And he left nothing outside of our control. But at the present, sometimes we don't see all things subjected to him. There are some people like me, both. Not me. I'm trying again. There's some people that like to be broke. I don't like I ain't to be one. broke. No, I don't like to be broke. Verse 9. But we are able to see Jesus. When you don't see all things subjected under your feet, you can still see Jesus, who was ranked lower than the angels for a little while, crowned with glory and honor, because of his having suffered death in order that by grace, unmerited favor of God to us sinners, he might experience death for every individual person. It's finished. It's done. Everything is finished. Everything we've been put back in the Garden of Eden with our original intent, which was keep the garden, increase, multiply, be fruitful, replenish, take dominion, reign. That's what we're called to do. Glory to God. Uh, peace is our aggressive weapon of warfare. Look at 2 Thessalonians 3.16. 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Hmm. I love this. So it's to keep us steady. 2 Thessalonians 3.16. He says, now may the Lord of peace himself grant you whose peace? His peace. The peace of his kingdom at all times and in all ways, under all circumstances and conditions, whatever comes, the Lord be with you. Amen. So see, when we got on our cleats and we got our belt of, of truth around us and we got our blessed pray, blessed breastplate of righteousness on and our helmet of salvation it doesn't make any difference what comes my way I can stand and having done all to stand I can stand because nothing nothing there is absolutely nothing is greater than God nothing is greater than the name nothing is greater than the blood Nothing is greater than his word. His word's the power to deliver us. Nothing is greater than his peace. His peace guards us. Look at uh, Colossians 3.15. Colossians 3.15. Oh. Colossians 3.15. And let peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule Act as an umpire continually in your heart, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind in that peaceful state to which, which as members of Christ's one body you were called to live and be thankful and appreciative, giving praise to God always. So see, when we, when we walk in that peace and we allow it to rule and umpire, then the things that come against us, we go, <laughs> I'm standing. You can't knock me off. And if I fall down, let me promise you, I will get up. That's right. Amen. That's right. Philippians 4, 7. And God's peace shall be yours. That tranquil state of a soul, mind, will, and emotions, assured of its salvation, assured of its rescue, assured of its deliverance through the anointed one and his anointing. And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot, whatever that lot is. That peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your heart and over your mind. So again, that nothing that comes is going to freak you out. Nothing's going to set you back. Nothing's going to make you afraid. But you're going to know that you know that you know that God's already done this. He's already, there is nothing that comes my way that he hadn't already made a way of escape. Amen. That's the truth. 
and he's made me more than a conqueror. So that means that there is a way, even in, even in the wilderness, even in the Red Sea, he made a way where there is no way. Amen? Uh, I've got to pick a few here. All right, let's go to Galatians 5.1. In this freedom, Christ, the anointed one in his anointing, has made us free and completely liberated us. Stand fast and don't be hampered and held back and ensnared and submit again to the yoke of slavery which you once put off. Isn't that, a, isn't that great? Let me tell you, we've been so set free. But again, if we don't know, if we don't know what we've been set free from, if we don't know that we've been set free, if we haven't settled it in our heart, if we don't have our feet firmly planted, it's just like, you know, my, another one of my scriptures is, in my prosperity, I will not be moved. You got to put your cleats on. Because on Monday mornings, things stare you right in the face and say, what, what, what was that you were believing? I said, in my prosperity, I shall not be moved. When things come your way that say there's not enough, in my prosperity, I said, I shall not be moved. When sickness comes, I said, I will not be moved. Health is part of my prosperity. Wisdom is part of my prosperity. Deliverance is part of my prosperity. It all belongs to me because he died to give it to me. And it's time that we stand immovable, strengthened and established in his word. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. It's just like... You can say what you want to say about that building, but I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, that's my building. According to the word of the living God. I don't know how he's going to do it. That ain't up to me. What's up to me is my job is to believe. And it is in my future. And I will go home. Amen. No, it's ahead of me. And all the people that's been stolen out of here, God's going to uh, restore and put back in place. That's right. Move forward. Move forward. So tonight, we've got on the armor of God. And no weapon formed against us has the right, the power to stand against us. Mm -mm. Nope. There ain't no sickness. There's no lack. There's no addiction. There's no strife. There's no division. There's no pandemic. <laughs> huh? No judgment. No shame. Uh-uh. No. No, no, no. So, Father, tonight we thank you. Thank you for being a covenant-keeping God. Thank you that that's one thing we can always know for a surety. You said it was to the death. Well, you've already died. <laughs> so it is telling us power over all the works of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us. I want to thank you, Lord, that we increase more and more every day, us and our children, and whatever we set our hand to will prosper. Thank you, Father, for leading us in plain paths because of our enemy. And thank you for the weapons of our warfare. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through you to, for the pulling down of every stronghold. And I give you praise for it in Jesus' precious name.